بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. It's always beautiful to come to the Mawlid and see different people, uh, different types of people, you know. And this is, I think, uh, the, the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the sabab of his chosen Prophet Muhammad that he can bring all these different types of people together. Right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِي خَلْقُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ From the great signs of Allah is the creation of the cosmos, the heavens and the earth, right? The creation of the universe. This is invitation to deal with the, possibly, the teleological argument for the existence of God, the, the argument that the universe is finely tuned for life. And in the variety, and in the variety of your tongues or languages and colors. This is a great ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A great burhan, an irrefutable proof of the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That you have this type of variety just in this place. There are people here, there are Arabs here from different Arab majority countries. You have South Asian contingency, you have uh, white Muslims, African American Muslims, you have Afghani Muslims, you have an Iranian, somewhere. he's in here somewhere. I know he is. You know there's a hadith, Arja, Arja hadith, the most hopeful hadith, Al Ma'u Ma'aman Ahab, right? A person will be with the one whom he loves. Why is this so hopeful? It's because the Sahaba, they knew that they loved the Prophet I would add another hadith to this, Salmanu minna ahlil bayt. Salman al farisi I have to be a little nationalistic. I'm usually the only one in the room. That's some of my students hear about what goes on in the classroom. It's probably criminal. At least some degree of racism. Hopefully not. Salmanu minna ahlil bayt. SubhanAllah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kullu, kullu nasab, kullu ansab, tanqati'u yawm al-qiyama ghayra nasabi wa sababi. Every type of uh, lineage or connection is cut off on the yawm al-qiyama, except, except my lineage and those who are somehow connected to me. So I can't be Ahlul Bayt, but I can be an adopted uh, member, as it were of Ahlul Bayt, and how do I do that? Like some man of Pharisee. You manifest an extreme mahabba for the Prophet ﷺ. He is the means by which parts are brought together. Just look around him, Bilal al-Habashi, Suhaib al-Rumi, uh, Salman al-Pharisee. You have Abdullah ibn Salam, al-Yahudi, who's ethnically Jewish. All these different types of people around him that he brought together. Right? One of the names, I was actually asked also to speak about, and this is what I really sort of took notes on. Sorry, I did the wrong thing. On, on, the, on the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. One of his names is Ni'matullah. Ni'matullah. The blessing, the blessing of God. The blessing of God. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, he says, uh, is like a grip to save your life. Like you're falling off a cliff. Imagine that grip. That's why everyone should be able to do one pull up. If you can't do one pull up, you can't save your life. Just one. I know his brother here, Zane. I, ch I challenged him one time to a pull up contest. He destroyed me. <laughs> he said, that's okay, you'll get better. I said, I used to be good. And, you know, I tried to save mine. Anyway. One, imagine that grip on the bar. You're going to fall to your death. This is called Al-I'tisam. Wa'atasimu bilhabilillah jami'an. What is habilillah? According to the hadith, it is kitabullah hablun mandudu min as-sama'i ila al-ard. The lifeline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends down from the heavens to the earth. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً 
and remember the great blessing of God upon you. You were enemies. You were enemies. In the first instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, the sub of Muslim, the occasion of its revelation, the immediate occasion, <laughs> is about the awlad al the Aus and the Khazraj, the Ansar, who had fought three intertribal wars on the brink of a fourth war, and then who came to them? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعَدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَ You were on the brink of falling into the fire. And then by means of this great ni'mah, the Prophet sallallahu you became brethren. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا You were on the brink of falling into a fire. And he saved you from it. He saved you from it. SubhanAllah. One of the early Muslim converts, uh, Khalid ibn Sa'id. This was even before the Prophet sallallahu was told to make public his risala, right? So uh, Ibn Sa'ad mentions this in the Tabaqat. This man Khalid ibn Sa'id, he had a dream, and this is obviously early Meccan period, he had a dream, and he went to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, because Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, before Islam was known as a dream interpret interpreter, he had uh, the ability to interpret dreams. So he went to Abu Bakr and he said, Yo, I, have, I had a dream last night. So what was your dream? I had a dream that I was standing on the edge of a lake of fire. A lake of fire. And I was on the edge and I'm sort of teetering on the edge. And I look into the fire and my father is there. And he's reaching out towards me. He's trying to grab a hold of me to pull me into the fire. You can imagine Abu Bakr, oh, okay, interesting. What else? He says, suddenly I felt someone come up from behind me and wrap his arms around me and pull me back and save me. It's okay. And I turned around, it's your friend. It's Muhammad. <laughs> Abu Bakr said, Ibshir, be of good cheer. He's the messenger of God. This is how he converted. Khalid ibn Sa'id. He was given a ru'ya of the Prophet ﷺ, saving him from the fire. SubhanAllah. So these are some of the names of the Prophet ﷺ. And the more names that we know of him, the more we can have ma'rifah of him. Ma'rifah is intimate knowledge, right? Not surface level, very deep knowledge. The more names that we understand, we'll have more ma'rifah, and the more ma'rifah of him that we have, we'll have more mahabba. Because ma'rifah is the path to love, unconditional love. You can't love something you don't know. You can't love someone you don't know. I can tell you to love someone. Do you love my cousin Milan? <laughs> you, you do. Well, it relates to you. So, so uh, many of is, he's, he's, he finds those beautiful loopholes. So, oh, look. I don't know what to do now. He took my punchline. <laughs> Maybe most of you. <laughs> most of you. You don't know my. You don't love my cousin. Why? You don't know him. Right? <laughs> you don't know who he is. Because you don't have ma'rifah of him. Right? So, you know, there's some, some Muslims, they say, you know, you can... You know, they see us, they go, we go to the Molid and they say, yeah, if only, if only uh, you had the same love for Allah that you have for the Prophet And this is a misguided sentiment, right? Because the love of the Prophet is the love of Allah. They're inseparable. Why do we love the Prophet For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love the Prophet because he is Rasulullah. He's a Prophet of God. Why do we love the Qur'an? Kitabullah, Kalabullah, right? The speech of God. Can you imagine somebody saying, oh, you know, it would have been great if um, the love you had the Qur'an, the same type of love you had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't make any sense. It's nonsensical. What are you talking about? We love the Qur'an because it's Kalamullah. We love the Prophet sallallahu because he is Rasulullah, right? When I was in Yemen, there was a... Uh, American professor who came to the Mawlid in Tareem. 
Um, and he admitted to me later he was a missionary. But it was sort of on the DL, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a missionary, by the way. He said, you should come to the Moli. Okay? So I was watching his face the whole Moli. And he was, he was just like... Then I asked him after, I said, what did you think? And I'll never forget, he said, this is, this is almost, I, 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 inshallah, a direct quote. He said, the love of the Prophet staggers me. It staggers me. I said, yeah, subhanAllah, it does. And then he said, because he kind of meant that in a sort of, and he said, I wonder how some of your co-religionists would feel about this. <laughs> so what do you mean? You know, this kind of love, it's kind of excessive, don't you think? It's kind of excessive. There's, there's no way we can be excessive with the love of the Prophet Because Wallahu ya'asimu ka minan nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects him from anyone worshipping him. There's never been any group that has outwardly worshipped the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has protected him from people taking him as an ilah. This is incredible, right? We don't have this type of isma with Sahaba for example. There's an interesting statement related to Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu Wajha, which is in Sunni and Shi'i sources. Nahjul Balagha mentions it. It's also in Suyuti's Tariqul Khulafa or Rashidin. And Sayyidina Ali, he says, Sayyahliku fi sinfan. Two groups on account of me are destroyed. Muhibbun mufritun. Yadhabu bihi hub ila ghayr al haq. The one who loves me so much, it takes him from the tree. And the one who hates me so much, it takes him from the truth. And he said, nas. The best people are those who are in the middle with respect to me. Right? And then he said, So stick to the great majority. This is a hadith for the protective power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the majority. Right? So we love the Prophet for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine somebody said, if only you love your country as much as you love your flag, whatever country it might be, the flag represents the country. It's a symbol of the country. Imagine somebody whose mother passed away and they're looking at the, the picture of their mother. If only you love your mother more, as much as you love your picture of the mother. What? What are you talking about? It's a nonsensical argument. We love, Allah, we love the Prophet Sallallahu for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So one of his names that is mentioned by the ulama is Abdullah, mentioned in Surah Al-Jinn, Ayah number 19. The perfect slave of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The perfect slave of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is his primary title in the Quran. You know, a lot of modern people find this disturbing. You say, we are Ibadullah. A lot of modern people say, Aram, what, you're a slave of God? I'm not a slave to nobody. I make my own rules. This type of individualism is egocentrism. The opposite of egocentrism is theocentrism. Right? That we are theocentric, and a lot of people find this very strange. It's very weird. That's fine. I'm okay with weird. Fatuba lil ghuraba, the Prophet he said, towards the end of time, you're going to be weird. We were weird at the beginning when we were, you know, talking about wahdaniya and ahadiyya amongst these mushrikeen. We're talking about halal and haram. This was very weird for the Arabs. Fasayyudu kama bada. It's also it's going to again become weird. Fatuba lil ghuraba. Glad tidings to the weirdos. <laughs> it's so weird. You don't drink alcohol? Like clockwork, every week on Friday, when I was in the corporate world, when I was sitting in the cubicle, sometimes I still sit in the cubicle. It's okay, don't worry about it. You gotta do what you gotta do. You coming to happy hour? No, I don't drink. Seven days later. You coming to happy hour? No, don't drink. Seven days later. Happy hour? No. Happy hour? No. That's so weird. It's, it's weird being a slave of God, right? But these same people, their nafs says, Ya Abdi, they say, La Pig. Ya Abdi, La Pig, La Pig, at your service. Everyone worships someone. 
Right? Right? Have you seen the one who takes his Hawa, like his desire, you know, like when you go to Hawaii, you let it all hang out. You know, you go to Hawaii and you look, you look for, you go to, uh, you know, you look on the ground and you see, oh, Huna Lulu, there's a pearl. Huna Lulu, sorry. Bad joke. Sorry about that. You know. But you think in terms of human slavery, yeah, it's very disturbing. In a relationship, in the Sayyid sort of apt relationship, you know, if you have a human slave, who benefits from that relationship? These, the slave master benefits, right? But in the Rabb Marbub relationship, who benefits? Do we benefit Allah? Who benefits? The Abd completely. We cannot benefit Allah one iota, right? And this is why when the Prophet ﷺ would hear his title, Abdullah, in the Qur'an, his eyes would fill up with tears. Because this is the greatest thing. This is the greatest title that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bestow upon a human being. That you are Abdullah. You are the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى Beyond the Sidratul Muntaha, where Jibreel alayhi salam cannot go or else he combusts into flames, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I told my Abba a few things. What's ma? Don't worry about it. Secrets between lovers. Uh, Ibn Mas'udi says, oh, the, the prayer was made fault, the wa'ad of Jannah, the promise of paradise, right? That's all we know. What else? Secrets between lovers. And the Prophet وسلم, was sitting on his knees and he was eating a date and a Jewish woman passed by and she said, uh, look, your Prophet eats like a slave. He said, I less to be apt. Am I not a slave? Am I not a slave? The how he responds to people, right? He's not, to use the term in academia nowadays, he's not so easily triggered, right? by these microaggressions. I'm triggered, I need a safe space. I need to go somewhere and play with Play-Doh, and, and play, play with Legos, you know, play some Pac-Man. You guys know what Pac-Man is? I had the Atari 2600 way back in the day. That was my first game, Pac-Man. Now you play Halo. <laughs> and it's a little different. Uh, but look at his response. Am I not a snake? That's it. Situation diffused. Right? Our mother Aisha said, Why do you pray all night? What for? Should I not be a grateful servant? Right? He perfected Rubudiya. And Shakur is interesting. This is another one of his names, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Shakur, the Shakir, is the one uh, who. Uh, is thankful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in times of prosperity. The shakir, active participle. The shakur is also an active participle, but it's a more um, emphatic form, meaning the one who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in adversity and in times of deprivation. He says, Alhamdulillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every state. And why is that? It's because he has unconditional love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another one of his names. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Habibullah, the beloved of God. There's numerous hadith. There's one in Tirmidhi. Ala wa ana Habibullah wa la fakhr. I am the beloved of God and I do not boast. Oftentimes the ulama, they use the analogy of, of marriage. They call it a living parable for, for love of God or mystical union with God. The ulama say there's four levels of love. There's four words in Arabic for love. If you're familiar with C.S. Lewis, he has a book called The Four Loves. It's the same in New Testament tradition, or Greek tradition. The first love is called mawadda, mawadda, right? And this means something like affection, 
or a willingness to sort of sacrifice for another person. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says that He put وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ between the spouses, a man and his wife, Mawadda wa rahma. Mawadda wa rahma. This type of affection and mercy. Because this is something else that's weird about us. When we get married, we're not necessarily in love. Sometimes it happens, the Bollywood movie comes true. Most of the time, it doesn't really happen. You don't even really know the person you're marrying. So why are you doing this? That's so weird. You guys are weird, man. You guys are weirdos. Why are we doing this? Because we're trying to follow the Sharia. We're trying to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu We want to. We don't want to offend Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We want to uphold the Deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But there's mawadda. What is mawadda? So there's a willingness to compromise, to work with each other. There's affection. Right? Just let me know when I'm going over time. I don't want to go too long. I think people are getting restless. So, this is the first sort of level. It's love, but it's more like an affectionate type of love. The, the name Dawood is taken from Mawadda. Wood. Dawood. Mawadda. But then you go to Khulla to stick with the marriage analogy. So you're married, and I'll speak from the, from the perspective of a, of a man, because I'm a man, and um, I believe that there's two genders. You need a safe space for that. I don't care. Um, so when you marry when you marry your wife, there's Mawadda, and then lo and behold, you start to like her. Right? You want to do things with her. That's called khulla. That's called friendship love. Right? You want to watch a, a movie together, halal movie, probably not Bollywood. Anyway. You want to go bowling together. Right? You want, you want to spend time together. This, this is friendship love, khulla. Right, so we come out of Mawadda. Right, so I'm like, okay, nice to see you, nice dinner, I'm gonna go bowling with the guys. I mean, you can do that, I guess. But, be careful. <laughs> and then you go to Ishq. Ishq is like intimate love, right? Which is it's temporary, it's fleeting. And then you get to Mahabba. Mahabba is unconditional love. So this person, this is a level of love for your spouse, they fall short. Sometimes they say things to you, right? They make mistakes, but that's okay. You love them unconditionally. You overlook these things. The love is always going to be there. So these four levels of love are also used uh, when describing our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there's mawadda, right? There's a willingness to compromise. And how do we go, how do we accomplish this? Is through the ibadat, right? We 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 start to pray. We pray fajr. I have a, a saying: never trust a person who doesn't pray fajr. Maybe it's not a good saying. <laughs> but, I mean, there's a hadith: the difference between a mu'min and a kafir is a salah. And most of the ulama say this is not an essential difference, but an attributive. Difference. In other words, if a Muslim is not praying, they're sort of acting like an unbeliever. But Ahmad ibn Muhammad said, it's an essential difference. If you don't pray, you're not Muslim. Right? So, mawadda of Allah intimates this idea that you're willing to go through some sacrifice. Even if you don't really know why you're doing it, you know you have to do it. You wake up, you pray fajr, right? you read some Quran, even if you don't understand. And then you get to khulla. How do we establish a friendship type love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do you establish a friendship type relationship with Allah? Is with dua. Right? Dua. Speak to Allah in a language that you understand, so I don't understand Arabic. Try to make a uh, attempt to understand what you're saying in the prayer. But then in your dua, a dua mukhul ibadah, there's a hadith that dua is the essence of worship. And this is how you become friends. This is how you become the khalil of Allah. 
You speak to Allah. You pour your heart out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then ishq. How do we uh, actualize ishq, intimate love with Allah? We make dhikr of Allah. We reflect upon the ni'am of Allah. And then finally, mahabba is through gnosis and total taslim of his qadr. Total submission to the decree of Allah. He probably did what all of you want to do. <laughs> or most of you make it. <laughs> Don't get out of my So Mahabba, unconditional love is attained by total taslim to his qadr. Like one of the awliya said, when I'm in the shade, I don't want to be in the sun. Allah put me in the shade. When I'm in the sun, I don't want to be in the shade. Allah put me in the sun. I am totally in a, in a state of reservation with Allah, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does with me. As long as he's not angry with me, Right? This was the only concern of the Prophet on the day of Ta'if. Being stoned out of the city, being chased out of the city for three miles. People say, oh, he left the city, he's okay. No, they followed him outside of the city gates for three miles. They're aiming for his legs, according to the traditions, because they want to break his legs and fall down and kill him. This is what they want to do. This was an attempted murder. The Prophet makes the beautiful dua. Is you know he, he said if, if this is all happening to me and you're not angry, fala ubali. I don't mind. I don't mind. This is what you want to do with me, no problem. But if you're angry with me, then that's I am I'm concerned about that. If this is happening because you have a of me, then there's there, there's a concern. I have to make a change here. But if not, you're pleased with me. And this is happening because it is your qadr, fala ubali then I don't mind. This is someone who is Habibullah, the beloved of God. Um, when should I stop coming? It's in here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, help us understand what was said tonight and to be able to incorporate um, and inculcate these these beautiful things that we say about the Prophet and have it manifest in our character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to have mahabba, to have unconditional love for him and his messenger.